to I'm not seeing anything different. Are you guys? Yeah, oh, there, there's a little button. Okay. All right. We are now recording. <coughs> so, guys, welcome. Thank you so much for <laughs> wanting to know how I made my funny little video. <laughs> so welcome, Thank you Andy. for sharing. Oh, it's such a pleasure, Ilaria. Andy, do you want to introduce yourself to the group? Sure. So, um, Andy Roberts, based in London, working in Spanish and English. I'm a visual facilitator and coach, not a graphic scribe, but I have a keen interest in learning because I also work at a couple of business schools. So I'm kind of keen to see how I can do more visual learning pieces. So this is the perfect timing, really. Oh, fantastic. Thanks, Andy. Colin, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay, Colin Horner, based in Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, trying to position myself as a graphic recorder, graphic facilitator, um, and just eager to learn anything new from you experts. <laughs> nice. Thanks, Colin. Ilaria, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Hello, everybody. I'm Ilaria from Rome, Italy. Hello. And uh, I'm graphic recorder and graphic facilitation. And um, I been experienced a few uh, video storytelling but not with i use procreate so it's yes. such basic things i'm so interested in uh, yes new tools and to learn from experts okay fantastic so so procreate and photoshop share similar trays so there, there will be a lot of crossover from from what i'm going to show you uh, to procreate and cool. and other other <laughs> programs that have layers um, so, so I'm going to be showing you two types of thing. The one thing is my thinking and the other is the, the stuff I do. So, um, some of it will be tech specific in this case, you know, the stuff I do, but the thinking will be, will be more universal than that. So, um, you, you've all seen the video. I wonder if I shouldn't just play it. Uh, yeah, shall I do that? Yeah, let's good play, it into, yes. play it into into this. This should be it. Meet Sarl. He lives in the mining town of Hesikl. Sarl likes his drink, dice, and has recently discovered the joys of tick. Saturday morning and he's walking to nowhere. Turning the corner onto Huerpa Lewis Avenue, he comes across the car wreck from last night. Yay! Hey, Sarl, my bro, what you up to, Min? Next, bro, I'm just chilling. You always chilling, Min. Going to call you a fridge one day, you know. Listen, me and a couple of my lackeys are heading out, riding Rajesh's new wheels, heading to the club, checking the ladies and what what. You know going to be wild tikka masala. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm keen, bro. Good, just bring some cash for the drinks and don't be a cheap ass. Sweet, my china, I'll call you back, eh? Hey, you, you owe me. You thought I forgot? This Yakalas never forgets. Either you pay or you will pay. Will you, yeah, mate? Sarl now has to make a choice between three different opportunities. He wants to party with Haroon, he is hungry, and he also wants to walk later on in life. Each choice comes with a cost. The first choice is that he can go partying, but he will be hungry and probably be tortured later. The second is that he can eat, but be miserable and probably be tortured later. And the third is that he can pay his debts, but will still be hungry and miserable. What should Sarl do? Which choice will give him the greatest return on investment, his personal best reward? The consequences and considerations of Sarl's choices are known as opportunity cost. What he sacrifices, his pleasure, his hunger pangs, or his limbs, are known as opportunity costs. 
Sauron can't have it all. No matter which option he chooses, the potential benefit he gives up by not choosing the other options is his opportunity cost. Because opportunity cost is a forward-looking calculation, the actual rate of return for all options is unknown. Opportunity cost considers the possibility that the returns of one choice might be lower than the returns on other choices. Sauron can go partying, but he might not have a good time. He can eat his hamburger, but still remain hungry. He could even pay his debts and still be beaten up. You just never know. What we do know, however, is what Milton Friedman almost said. There is no such thing as a free bunny child, you know. <laughs> All right, there we go. So that is, <laughs> that's, the, that's the video. Let's welcome Paula. Hello, Paula. Oh, your, your microphone is muted. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, there you Hi. go. Hi. I, I, we, we just started by introducing ourselves. I am recording this so I can stick it on YouTube if that's okay with all the participants. Everyone else has said it's okay. So if you're okay with it, I'll put it on YouTube. If not, I won't. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Paula. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Paula Kehoe. I live in Boulder, Colorado. And I just recently was asked to potentially make an explainer video for a renewable energy oh. um, contract. And I really didn't know how to start I, with my own drawings. I, I know there's a lot out there if, if you want to use other people's drawings. So when this came along, I was very interested. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Oh, and I've just realized that I haven't introduced myself to the group, although several of you do know me. <laughs> My name is Roy Blumenthal. I live in Johannesburg, South Africa, and I'm a visual facilitator amongst many other things that I have been in, in, in life. Um, one of the things I do is draw things, and another thing I do is sound design. I, I've, done a, I've done a bunch of things, but what I would like this thing to do, this, this event, this little Zoom meeting, I'd love it to end at eight o'clock and I'd love to show you just some of the techniques and thinking that I've been using to come up with this. So I think the very first thing I'd like to do is show you the script. So let's have a quick look on here. Control A, Control C. I'm just going to pop this into Photoshop. What you see in front of me now is Photoshop. Uh, I'm just going to increase the size of the script so that you can read just some of it. Um, please give me a moment. Okay, so, so when you work on an explainer video, there, there, are, oh, there are a whole load of things that you need to bear in mind. The first thing to bear in mind is that the script is not God. All right, so don't be too literally bound by the script. So I'll, I'll give you an example. They've written opening scene, scraggly man, short t-shirt, dirty jeans, one earring, mallet hairstyle, walking down a potholed road in suburbia. Power lines can be seen close by. Men are sitting outside houses drinking. Chicken wire fences built on pallet wood. Scrap cars on bricks in one or two front yards. Dogs on chains barking. So I'm pretty sure you noticed that in my video, there were no dogs on chains barking. There were no scrap cars on bricks in front yards. There were no chicken wire fences built on pallet wood. There were no men sitting outside houses drinking. Is that about accurate? Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So, so the reason that I didn't do any of that, there are several reasons. But so, so one of them is that budget is always dependent on the number of, of pictures I have to draw. So that should be your case too, Paula. In, in, in your interpretation, you've pretty much got to look at it and say, 
for a, for a small budget video, I can draw a few pictures. For a medium budget video, I can draw many more pictures. For a gigantic budget video, I can draw as many pictures as the client wants. But having said that, what the client wants is almost never what is required. Because in my judgment as somebody who is experienced in making videos and in understanding visual communication, I decided that it wouldn't need, that this video wouldn't need all of the setting up stuff in that front scene. So, I, you know, I'm, I may or may not have made the wrong choice there, but it is a choice that I decided to make. So you have to be very confident in the fact that you have to make choices. So that's, I think, the biggest number one there is that your script is not God. Your you, will make cho you will make choices. Does that sound about right to you guys? Yep. <clears throat> any any um any input on this so far or questions? Because I'd I'd like you to question. to question me. Yeah. I have a question. Um, this is Paula. Yeah. Um, so are you not part of the script in the first place? Who writes the script typically? So in this particular case, I was not part of the script. This was a bunch of MBA students who had to explain a particular concept as part of a project and their classmates had to make other videos that, dis that, that described other concepts similar to this. Um, so they came up with the script and they recorded the voiceover without m having consulted me at all. So I, I was not involved in this particular one. Um, when it comes to explainer videos in general mostly the client has got some kind of an idea of what they want and sometimes they've hired a script writer to do it so if that is the case then i'm basically inheriting a script if if that isn't the case then i would much rather write the script myself because then i can control all of the factors that are within my control such as that opening scene but at the same time, I can control these things anyway because I'm the one doing the drawing and doing the animating. And they're buying my expertise as somebody who knows what choices to make. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah, it sounds like you have to have good communication, though, with the scriptwriter so they don't... No, not really. Um, most people who write these scripts just write the scripts. They don't give a damn. Oh, okay. They, okay. there's, there's very little investment on people's part um, when, they, when they're doing things like this. Like a voiceover artist in a booth will do literally whatever you tell them to do. So if you say mm -hmm. to them, uh, no, please do that again, but much, uh, in a much deeper voice, they have absolutely no ego to, uh, involved in it. So they're not going to be saying, you know, I am an actor and, and, and I will not sully my work. By, by doing it your way, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not typically part of it. But, but you, do get, you do get clients who think they know how to write and they have written the script and they get very tetchy if you try and change things. But you, you talked about the, this thing of good communication. So you're partly right and you're partly, I would say, overstating things. In this particular case, I chose not to communicate much with this client at all. I ch I, the, my, my biggest communication with them was upfront where I said, I'm going to interpret the script and I'm going to make something along the lines of the other things I've made. And they were very happy with that. And they said, yes, please, please interpret, do whatever you need to do. We want to score very high marks for this in our assignment. So that was part of my brief from them and part of my brief back to them is that I was going to interpret. So that's, I think, if, if you are talking about communication, it's, you've got to also choose the right things to communicate. Like you really don't want to ask clients, do you like the yellow color in the background? Because four out of five clients won't like the yellow background if you draw mm -hmm. their attention to it. But no clients out of five will, will hate the background just spontaneously. Does that make sense? Can I ask yeah. a question, Rod? Yes, please. Um, so on this particular project assignment. Yes. 
Were you given a script or were you given a voiceover or were you given both? I was given the script about three days before I got the voiceover, but I was busy, so I didn't have, I, I was not able to read the script or listen to the voiceover until I had the time allocated to start working on it. But, but, the, the, but the final uh, explainer video. Yeah. Has it got the original voiceover? Uh, yes, the, the the one that you've just listened to, that is pretty much the original voiceover. So with a the few original edits. script, which then somebody at Stellenbosch recorded as a voiceover. Yes. Okay. okay. So, so I'm not sure I'm answering your question. Uh, am I? So, 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 I mean, I need to listen to it and watch it two or three times, but, but what you're saying is that they've said things or they've written things in the script and then said it in the voiceover, which you haven't interpreted into pictures. Um, there, there, was a, there was a piece of the voiceover that I had to remove because it was super confusing. And I did that in okay. consultation with them. Uh, and I said to them, it sounds like you've muddled okay, so up the concept. So you've taken the MP3 file and then you've edited it according yes. to the way you want to visualize it mm, in agreement more or less um, more or less um but i'll show okay. you on, on premiere pro what i did with the with the voiceover so i'll, I'll show you that in a moment okay but in the meantime um we'll go to the beginning of the script so this was what i started with and the way i did it is okay so 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 i decided just a, a, as a as an aesthetic choice to use an isometric grid, you can see um, you can see the grid right here. Um, are, are you are you seeing yeah. it? The, this, yeah. These angles. This is isometric, and I used a little a little Photoshop plugin to do that. It's a little action that I that I downloaded. Uh, let's find it, just so you can see it. Um, I don't know if Procreate runs actions. I suspect not. But can you see over here? I've, I've called up something called easy isometric grids and I basically just ran grid pixel art this one that I've just highlighted and then I colored it yellow a nice sort of nondescript kind of dusty town yellow all right then what I did was I now now please let me know if, if, if you see this coming up I'm I'm opening up snag it which is a screen capture tool I'm saying it must capture uh this the the area inside this boundary are you able to see that yeah <clears throat> i'm hitting video can you see it saying initializing it'll probably give yeah. me some error message about my camera which is fine <coughs> excuse me continue that's something to do with the webcam i'm i don't i'm not interested in the webcam when i'm doing this i'm i'm only interested in capturing what i'm drawing so now I'm going to record. So I've I've created a, a, a clear back a, a clear layer for myself. Let's just make another one just for the heck of it. I'm choosing my my brush, and now I will write my title. So I'm following the isometric grid. I'm just doing this freehand, and I've practiced this once or twice beforehand, before recording, so that I know where I'm aiming at. All right. So, okay. so that sort of thing happens sometimes where I press too hard. Now I make it 3D. Now all of this, I have opted to do this, to record this, so that I have the choice in my edit to use speeded up footage of me doing this part so that people can see that this is a handmade video that this is some human being drawing things does that make sense yeah mm -hmm. now are I'm you using... drawing this in photoshop okay you're drawing it in photoshop yes i'm drawing this in photoshop the way you would be drawing it in procreate and here i'm, I'm simplifying my my shadow kind of concept I'm not using realistic shadowing, but I'm making it realistic enough to read as three-dimensional. 
All right. I'm making a layer underneath it using a lasso tool to just give myself a shadow. So I'm going to choose a color. I'm going to go down to about 30%, 40%, doesn't matter. Turn it to darken. Fill that up. Control G, Control D. So now I will press stop on my video. So, oh wait, so I'll pause here for a while just to give myself some freeze frame material, some material that I'm not going to, um, that's not going to be moving. Then I'll press stop. Now, what has happened is Snagit has recorded a tiny clip. Can you see, can you see it coming up there? I'm just going yes. forward. And you can see that it's captured everything that I've done. And it's done it at a fairly high resolution, enough to make it 720p. So can you see that? You understand yes. what's happening here? Yes. Now, now, I've done this for every single component of the script. But before I can do that, I have to actually really understand what the script is, is asking me to do. So that's probably the, the second biggest trick is to find out what the script wants. So you've always got to say to yourself, what, what does the client need this thing to communicate? So, so I use a four, a four point checklist that I ask my clients. I say, who is the target audience? What are we offering them? And by we and offer, I'm talking about what, what are they supposed to get out of the video? All right. Proof. So what, what backup material do they have to make sure that their offer is actually valid? And then this is a big one. It's called takeout. What do we want the viewer to feel and think and do? at the end of watching our video. So in this case, who's the target? It's people who don't understand accountancy concepts like cost of opportunity. What is the offer? We're making it easy for them to understand this, this accounting principle, um, cost of opportunity. What is the proof? The proof is whatever economic principles these guys have researched and studied and they will embed into the video. The takeout is, oh, wow, I now understand cost of opportunity and I can use this in my everyday life. So does that make sense to you? Yeah. And now, and now once, yeah. I've, once I've got that, that, those four things, I'm always asking myself at every turn, I'm looking at the script and I'm saying to myself, what exactly, uh, how, wh those four questions, how does all of this, relate to that. So I'm always looking for that clarity. I want the takeout. So for me, my, 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 the realm we work in is giving people that intangible sense of understanding. We as visual facilitators and visual practitioners, we're giving them a way of understanding things that they can't get through voice alone or through words <clears throat> alone. So that's where, where the mystery and the magic comes in. So Kerry says, burnt out car on the corner, police cordoned off. Um, in the voice, they, he recorded, meet Sorrel. He lives in the mining town of Chisikl. Sorrel likes his drink, dice, and has recently discovered the joys of tick. That's a kind of a drug. It's Saturday morning and he is walking to nowhere. So, so let's just look at that. It's Saturday morning, and he is walking to nowhere. So we don't care about Saturday morning. That, 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 that's irrelevant to, to the meaning of the script. But walking to nowhere is a concept. So how do, I, how do I convey that in a video? How do I convey that in this video? So let's have a quick look. Let's just go down here. So, so I say to myself, all right. Um, I need a, I need a character. So in, in, in my thinking, before I started drawing, I came up with a couple of ideas for how Sorrel would look. 
And my main, my main need was to make it easy for me to animate him in this low-tech kind of way. So I figured that Sorrel would be one of my blob people. He would be, he would be in this perspective. He would have arms and hands. He would have a collar of some sort and he would have a face. And then he, he would have some kind of a hairstyle. Let's just call it that for now. He'd have eyes and he'd have a sort of a, a cartoon mouth. I didn't want him any more complicated than that. And I'll show you why. Because I wanted to be able to create him once and then cheat that I was using the same picture because I actually had to draw him about five times in different in different um, perspectives but for now I'm remembering I'm saying to myself Sorrel is now walking down a street so how do I make Sorrel walk down a street so in my case because I'm doing this low tech I'm using my move tool and I'm moving him down the street just like that I'm dragging him but I'm not dragging him so that the screen does this because on, on video that would show so let's go back to Sorrel so I finished drawing him where I want him to be for the start of the shot knowing that I'm going to walk him off the screen like this knowing that later I'm going to use sound effects to deal with that does that make sense to you yes yep. okay so now now that's my particular version the, the the if you wanted to do this without okay you can you see there's a funny little thing that says 1.08 centimeters and 0.34 centimeters somewhere near his nose can you see that see that yes all right yep. you probably don't want that in your video am i right <laughs> you probably right. want yours to be a little bit more professional than this i wanted the low-tech look so i wanted this to be part of it but if you don't want that what you do is you switch off all of your other things including your background layer so that you have a transparent being and you export that transparent being as a ping file can you see that top right quick export as ping png now what a png file is I'll, I'll actually let me let me just do this i'll show it to you sorrel fake sorrel new <coughs> excuse me that's a cough save so that should be saving Sorrel into my folder as, as a ping. There he is. Um, can you see there's no background? Yeah. All right. So when I drag that into Premiere Pro or whatever editing software I use, um, it, it has no background and I can animate that within my editing software without having any other problems in the background. So uh, can you see here, I've, I've highlighted grid.jpg. That, that, that is a, a plain version of that isometric grid that I could have pulled into, into, um, into my editing program, my video editing program, uh, without having to do any of the, 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 the sort of low tech stuff that I was showing you now, now. you know, moving this guy like this okay so um so 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 yeah. you're animating him as a as a still image and just moving him across the screen correct so that now that that's that's the most simple he way of doing this he can't move his mouth he can't do anything but okay. let me show you control x control shift v what I've done is I've cut out his arm. I'm now going to just fill in.
be fill this in. So I want you to see that there's an arm here. Now I can I can save this arm as a as a ping file, a transparent mm -hmm. ping file. I can save this dude as a transparent ping file, or I can put him in a, a, a group, export the group, and bring that into my editing program as a group. And then I can individually, without any artifacts, I can, I can animate his arm in something like Premiere yeah, Pro. Slice and dice. Yeah, slice and dice. Yeah, slice and dice. So, so like this. But um, that'll, be, that'll be done invisibly. In, in something like Premiere Pro or After Effects, yeah, Adobe After, After Effects. Effects. So you won't see these bounding lines and you won't see these funny little things going out. And you can do that with his mouth and you can do it with his eyes. You can pretty much do that any, you, you know, that, that, that's how you would do it if you wanted to be slightly more sophisticated than the way I did it. But for my purposes, I didn't want that. I, I wanted, I specifically wanted Sorrel to be this low-tech dude I didn't want to take four weeks to animate this. I wanted to take basically four days, which I did. And they had a deadline, so their clock was ticking, my clock was ticking. I needed to be able to make changes if they required them, and I needed basically a half a day buffer in case that happened. So that was that was pretty much my reasoning for having him be this ultra low tech dude. Yeah. Uh, let, let me just show you something else in Photoshop, which isn't relevant to Procreate, I don't think. I've just selected these two layers, the arm layer and the dude layer, and I've used the, the connect tool over here. It's the link layers tool. And now if I move one or the other, both move together. So that's something important to do so that you don't mistakenly leave the arm behind pretty much like this. So if I move, you don't want that to happen. Yeah. Okay. So, so you link things. And the easiest way to do it in Procreate is to create um, a folder. So I can move my folder around. See. Okay. So that, that's, that's kind of the drawing process. So now you're going through the script doing everything like this. So you're saying to yourself, what do I have to draw now? And what does that have to result in? How does that have to end up? In this particular case, he has to end up walking down the street. And then he has to end up coming back up the street. So let me, let me just um, do this. Control J. V. I've made a copy of him. I'm going to now. Mm, I don't really have to do this. So let, let me let me rather do it like so. Um, control T. Flip horizontal. What I've done now is I've just made my second view of him. But I do need another view of him. I need a view that looks like this. Um, uh, let's see, I need him walking that way, so I need his arm there, I need his nose, I need his collar, some sort of pants, okay, does, is this making sense to you? Do you draw an iPad or Wacom or? I'm using a Wacom and it's a Mobile Studio Pro. Oops, Control Z. Uh, what do you guys draw on? What's that? I say what do the? Uh, I can't remember your name. Sorry. What 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 are the other people drawing on? Drawing Ilaria, on Ilaria draws on an iPad Pro with a pencil. Andy, okay. I think, does the same. Yep. Um, yeah. There are some differences, but uh, something I can do and 
So, for example, in Procreate, we can um, uh, record the video while drawing, but yes. we cannot stop it or pause it. So it's uh, one big, big uh, record that eventually we can cut in editing. You see, in in this particular thing, in this in in this way of doing it, it doesn't matter wh whether you start or stop. You just you you know you break your your, your story down into the discrete components. So you know that okay. part one, he's going to walk this way. Part two, he's going to appear from the bottom of the screen and go that way. All right. Yeah, that's, that's and cool. he's going to find a car. So, so there's going to be a, a car crash. So he's going to come across that. And, and, and that's all you need to draw. So you don't need to do anything more than just these bits for the first part of, the, of your video, right? Mm. And then you press save. And then you basically, you're doing exactly the same as I am. You, you're, you're pressing, by pressing save, you're pressing stop on your recording. Does that make sense, Hilaria? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, and then you open a new file. You use the same background or whatever it is you've you've chosen, and mm. you do the next component, and then the next and the next. So so it keeps going like that. So let's have a look. Um, let's see what. Oops. Let's kill these things. Let's leave the car prang. So, so you're basically just developing your 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 system as it goes. So here's the car, big. There's Sorrel going to the car. Let's have a look. There he is. That's the the drawing I made of him walking out. This is him walking up, and I can turn that and do whatever I need to do. I have a question, Roy. Yes. Um, when you record the the video or yes. uh, the drawing yes does it record uh, uh, if you move it i mean uh, you play rec and then uh, you take uh, the the draw and you move it yes or yes. you do it after effects no for me in this particular video i i did not want to do it in after effects or premiere i wanted it to i wanted to do it exactly easy. as i was doing it in photoshop it wasn't necessarily easier because i had to i had to create each scene in my head mm. before i did anything and then i had to make sure that i hit the right marks so yes. you know i had to know that he was going to go off screen here and then he'd have to come back on screen about there you know that kind of thing yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. That's uh, also with Procreate. Yes, the, I mean, you, you cannot make mistakes unless you really want to make a big, big um, edit. Uh, no, work. no, no. You can make mistakes as long as you... So, so, okay, so let me go back to Photoshop. I'll show you... I'll, let, let, me, let me show you how to make an innocent mistake. Okay. Yes. So, so... I'm drawing, blah, blah, blah. Um, mm -hmm. oh, in fact, let me, let me make this the mistake. All right. So, so um, I, I'm using the, the bucket fill tool over here mm -hmm. and over here. And I want to use it to fill in blue in his body, but I make a mistake. Yes. Now, I can panic or I can just do undo. So I go undo. Then what I do is I take my brush, I close that gap there, and I just fill it. So now I know that in my edit, I'm going to have to remove that section where, where everything filled up like this. Yes. yes. All right. So, and, and because nothing else has moved, it makes no difference. All I will mm. do is remove those few frames. Mm. So I'll basically have... Um, oops, control Z. I'll basically have in my timeline... I'll have the start of the footage, the end of the footage, and I'll have this funny section in the middle that has to go. <laughs> yes. All right, and I will kill it. And then I will join those two bits together, and it'll be as if nothing ever happened. Because I didn't panic. I didn't move anything. 
I didn't mm -mm. go, oh, no, oh, and then start <laughs> again over here. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, 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 of course. So because it's so simple, you, you don't really have major consequences to errors. Unless you do something terribly stupid, like, uh, like I can show you an, a non-innocent mistake, a mistake that you can't fix, would be your, your drawing. And you know that he's supposed to be um, reaching for something up there. Oops. And you cut his fingers off. Hmm. That you can't fix. Because he's supposed to be like this. Yeah. But you made a mistake. You can't, that you can't fix. Well, you can if you know the rules of filmmaking. Um, <laughs> there is a way to fix it. Okay, but it's a terribly difficult yeah. way. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you very roughly what it means. Um, um, there's, a, there's a camera rule for changing shots. Um, I'll show you. This is the camera. There are three cameras. This is your plane. So we're looking at it from the top. This is our subject. Okay. Is this, uh, is this at all clear to you? Do, can you see what I'm showing you? Um, yes. All yeah. right. Um, so camera one. No, let's go, let's go this way. So this is camera one. And that gives us this shot. So this shot is, cam is shot one. Um, if you move your camera 30 degrees to, in either direction, you can easily fix your mistake. So you move it 30 degrees and you move it a third of the way in or out. So zoom in or out one third of the distance. So this is wrong. Um, so that's camera three. So, so you move a significant amount of distance and then you can reframe. So your shot will then end up being, uh, so let's just draw our wall in here for him. Okay. Um, so you just go to another shot. So you choose cam this camera and you say, all right, let's look at him from, from a distance. Oops. Okay, whereas this one was like so, this one is like so. Making sense? And then, then yeah. you've changed. Yeah. Then, then, then you've you've rescued yourself because then you simply cut to the next shot in your video. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so let's have a quick look at our timeline here. Okay, so this is um, Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm now shrinking the timeline so that I can show you what it looked like. You probably can't really see much detail and I can't, oh wait, you know what I can do? I can print screen this and make it bigger. Let's do that. Uh, boom. 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 Take that into Photoshop. Control V. Oh, I haven't. Uh, uh, sorry, Control A, Control C. Oh, use keyboard shortcuts. By the way, they are they are your friend. Okay, so um, Colin, your question had to do with the recorded audio. That's this track here, audio one, which is, let me see, which is this track here. So you were given a, um, <clears throat> an audio file. Yeah, I was given a, a, straight a straight audio file, which had some mistakes in it. It had some repetitions. It had the guy mm -hmm. trying different things. And um, it was pretty close to, to as it should have been. But there was one area where he, the, the, the thug, he did the thug in Sarl's voice instead of a thug's voice. So I had to do, I had to redo that myself. 
so I just did it. Um, <laughs> and, and you have to expect that kind of thing as well. Sometimes the voiceover isn't as professional as he should be. And in this case, he wasn't. He definitely wasn't a professional because his recording was very hollow. And I disguised that with my sound design. So uh, he, he was in a very cavernous type of room and with a lot of fan noise and all sorts of stuff coming out. So I had to clean up quite a lot in him. So can you see every single thing, every single break here, um, that's an edit, that's an edit. There's a, I've, I've removed the volume from that. I took that out. Cut there, cut there, cut there, cut there, cut there, cut there. Cut there, cut there, cut there. There, there. Now, now what I'm doing here, for instance, in this section, I want timing. I need comic timing. So I'm giving space for the sound effect. That's the guy walking off screen. So he's going... <coughs> and so, so the first thing I do when I, when I do the edit is I basically slap my audio down. I put my audio in and then I put my, uh, then I try and put, fit, I just put, I throw all of my visuals in, in order. So I just want to show you, uh, are you able to see the numbers on the side here? Uh, can you see I've highlighted 01street.wav? And something's come up that says 02 cell phone 276608. And then O2 phone vibrate. Can you see those things? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're very small, but yeah. They yeah. are, they are. So cost of op 01, that's video. So what I did was I, I renamed all of my files, my um, Snagit files, the, the files that came out of this editor here. Um, so that, that's what they looked like when I, when I, when I um, finished recording each one. And then I would say edit. Uh, file, save as, and then I would give them a meaningful name. Cost of opportunity 001. Um, so in, in this no. case, no, yeah, so there, uh, that's not a good example. So, so things like cost of op, burger shatters. Cost of op 12, thug arrives. Cost of op 13, thug movement. Cost of op 14, thug threatens. So what I'm doing there is I'm following the script with those numbers so that when I'm assembling these things in, in video, I don't have to think. All I have to do is, is, is put them in order in, in, in this thing over here, in my bin. And then when I drop, so then I select them all by saying select all. And then I drop them onto a particular video track. So video one or video two. I normally use something like video three because I know I'm going to be moving under and over, but that's technical stuff. So what happens is all of those tracks, then whatever times they are, that becomes like a 30 or 40 minute movie. So the timeline doesn't look anything like this. It looks like a whole bunch of dominoes laid end to end that are with different lengths of domino ending all the way down at 36 minutes or however long. However long it is. Them together, Roy. Say again. <coughs> Say again so, for me, so, Colin. You know, you've got a particular scene. Yeah. Um, whatever. How do you how do you <coughs> stream it into the next? Okay, so so that's all cutting, cutting and pasting, right? So so for instance, here I'm. In the opening sequence, hi, I'm Sorrel. Yeah. There he's walking. There he's approaching the car. All right, so all I'm doing, um, let me go back to that, this thing here. So this one here um, was, hi, I'm Sorrel. This one was Sorrel walking off. And this was Sorrel approaching the car. Okay, so they just sit next to each other. Can you see that one's got an FX sign? FX means I've put yeah. a, an audio, a, a video effect on it. So I've dissolved it into the next one. Okay. So that's a, a, but that's an editing thing. You often don't have to do that kind of thing. So almost every 
shot doesn't have a video effect. So you probably, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to expand my timeline. Uh, I'm not sure what that effect is. Oh, oh that effect was um, this. Can, can you see these little, um, these little ones right at the top on V4? This, this stuff here. On the timeline. So, are you, are you seeing yeah, the timeline? I can't, I can't okay. read them. No, no, you don't have to read them. I'm just showing you the, 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 the sizes of things. So, so those are different um, starting and ending transitions. Yes. And uh, the, the FX on there, that isn't any kind of um, dissolve or any kind of um, editing effect. Watch this. Hi. You. That is a clean cut. So those effects are specifically to do with the size of the um the footage inside the picture mm. so, because i had to i had to make each one the right size so that's <laughs> that's it so you don't have to even think too much about it straight edits are fine straight edits are, are not the enemy so 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 very very briefly the 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 first part of the sequence is I put my audio down and I clean it up and I make it, I make it clean and right and ready for manipulation. Then I put my, all of my video in and then I start at the very beginning. So I go right to the very beginning and I take my first shot and I say, my first shot is my title sequence. Um, let's just go there. And you have to learn your keyboard shortcuts, by the way. <laughs> so that starts with a dissolve in. So it dissolves from black to this. And in the drawing, that took me about, I don't know, three minutes to draw, maybe two minutes. I don't know. I know that it can't be that long because I, I don't want my audience to fall asleep. So remember, I'm always thinking about what my audience wants and what I want them to think. All I want them to know is that this is a, a movie and it's called Sorrel's Choice. So wow. I want to make that two seconds or something. So I choose my footage. I say speed duration. Can you see it's two seconds and 29 frames? That's the thing that I've just highlighted. So I've sped it up so that it is two seconds and 29 um, frames. And that is an 8,000% speed up from what it used to be. <laughs> okay. So now I'm, now I'm fitting the dominoes together. I'm saying, okay, this thing goes here. It needs to be two seconds, two or three seconds. So pop it in. Then I, I go to the next thing. That's five minutes of footage. I look, I, I look at the footage. I say, what do I need? Where do I need this to start? So let's, um, Let's just go and find some footage. So what has to happen? It needs to follow the voice, right? So is of tick. the joys of tick. So there I've made the timing, I've increased the timing so you can say hi I'm sorrow. Now I've made him walk. Saturday morning. Now this is all so let's just isolate things. I'm going to solo the voice so you can hear what this sounds like without any sound effects. It's Saturday morning and he's walking to nowhere. Turning the corner onto Huapa Lewis Avenue, he comes across the car wreck from last night. So that's it without any sound effects. So did you, can you agree that that sounds terrible? Does that sound awful to you guys? Me. Ooh, have we so it's like he's in a cave. Yeah. So, 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 so then I say to myself, all right, what does it need? So then I go to something like um, freesound.org. 
and I find things. So I'm looking specifically for Creative Commons Nort license because that means I can use it without having to attribute it. Because with things like sound effects, I don't care too much about, I, I don't need to acknowledge the creator of a sound effect because you know, the, the pretty much somebody's held a microphone to something. And um, I will acknowledge them if their, their Creative Commons license says I need to acknowledge them. But I'm specifically not wanting to waste too much time on that. So I'm specifically looking for things under the correct Creative Commons license for me to use. So let's listen to this. So I can use that, right? So I download it. Um, I make sure it's the right license. I then go and stick it in where I need it. Okay. And that, so then I slowly build up my soundtrack. <coughs> and the other half of that is um, freemusic.org, which is the free music archive. And I find stuff that I want to, that I want to, um, that I want to use. And in this case, I, um, I don't mind, I don't mind um, acknowledging them the way they require to be acknowledged because credits are, are there for that kind of thing. So you do need credit sequences. So let's see. Here is their, this is their license um, stipulation. Swarm by Parallel Park is licensed under attribution, non-commercial, share alike. That means attribution i need to i need to recognize their name in the in the credits non commercial means i can't this product that i make can't make money share alike means that i am permitted by the by the creator of the content to mix and match it and cut it and snip it and do whatever i want with it so the two important parts here are attribution and share alike now if this had been for a company, I would not have been able to use the non-commercial thing. Because it's students doing an MBA thing, I can use the non-commercial license. So you've got to be very sensitive to this kind of thing, else you turn into a copyright thief. Yeah. And, and you mustn't be a copyright thief. It's really not acceptable. So you use things like Free Music Archive. You can actually search for the kind of music you want. So you can you can see what licenses are available and choose to search for those kinds of music. Just music that is only attribute or, or attribution or only public domain. And there's tons, tons and tons and tons. It's all free and the attribution is what counts. So basically, um, in Premiere or whatever audio thing, uh, whatever video thing you're doing, you're using, you need to start assembling things. You need to start putting music in. And you need to start creating atmospherics to back up how your, how your script works. So um, you're going to hear the footprints here. He lives in the mining town of Hesikl. Sauron I mean, likes his there. drink, dice, and has recently discovered the joys of tick. Saturday morning and he's walking to nowhere. Turning the corner onto Huerpa Lewis Avenue, he comes across the car wreck. So you heard the footsteps, right? I used those as, as atmosphere to make to make your mind believe that this was a person walking. Now he's gonna mess around in the car wreck and find something, and you're gonna hear just a bit of rubble and a bit of a ka ching crack from last night. There. Yay. And that was his cell phone ringing. So I, pre I preceded the cell phone shot. I didn't want to show him taking a cell phone out of his pocket. I didn't want to do that. That's just a waste of time and, and energy for the viewer. So I have the sound of the cell phone while he's looking for stuff and finding money. And then the next shot, there he is answering the cell phone. You see how that works? So I'm using sound as a director to get your attention where I want it. Exactly. Yeah. So I, d I don't know if that's, um, if, if this kind of answers your need. Do you have any questions at this point? 
No, f f from me. Andy, you've disappeared. Level of um, difficulty. Oh, hello. Can you hear me now? I, I, I can, yes. Okay, no, I just said that was really helpful just to see the level of uh, how complicated it is, but also to get a sense of the timing. So you mentioned that you, for this clip, which is only a few minutes, you've spent four days putting it all together, and that includes the sound editing and everything off the back of them giving you the recording. Yes, yes. If I had to do the record, well, um, sure. Um, I would not do the recording. Doing the recording for something like this needs a professional sound studio. So if this, if this were a real business, uh, as opposed to a bunch of MBA students, I wouldn't have accepted that sound, that, that audio recording. Their audio recording was shocking. So, you know, uh, um, that's why there's so much music in this. All, all of that atmospheric music is to disguise the crapness of their audio. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you can't, you can't run that without, uh, if that didn't have music in the background, you would be going, oh my God, this sounds shocking. You know, that, right. that's, uh, and, and that's not acceptable for a, for a commercial thing. And sure. unfortunately, what the, what, what people don't know the difference between a commercial audio and the person who did the video animation. All they hear is, if they, if they, if they take out at the end of it, you know, that, that fourth step that I look for, take out, the, what do they think, say, and do? Um, if the audience hears anything horrible or, or dislikes something and they don't put their finger on it, they basically condemn the whole thing in their head. They don't know why, but they condemn it. It's like they go, oh, this is shit. Yeah. And they don't go, oh, the audio was shit. They go, oh, this was shit. And that's it. You're finished. And, and, and if one audience member does that, many more will be doing it. So you kind of have to really be careful about things like professional audio. If you ever have to quote on, on doing the whole, the whole thing, you really must get um, a, a, a professional voice studio in and you must get a proper sound engineer. Like what I was doing here is very basic sound engineering. My sound design is a lot less basic than my sound engineering. Um, but, but sound design is an intellectual process, not a, not a mechanical process. Great. Um, and I'm not sure we've seen Paula's comment in, in the chat, uh, Roy, which is no. why did you use After Effects to put this together? Oh, why didn't I use After Effects? Oh, firstly, yeah. mainly because I don't really know, know After Effects. I'm, I'm not good on it. So okay. I've got it, but I don't use it. Um, it would have been a very big learning curve for me to do it in After Effects, even if I'd wanted to. But having said that, if you know After Effects, that is absolutely, that's, the, that's number one for this kind of stuff. Because um, otherwise you're just doing what I did. You know, you, you're basic, doing basic assembly, basic sound recording. And you're, you're stuck with using pretty much what I used, the, the low-tech route, which was moving my dude without without animating him properly in, in After Effects. In After Effects, there's so much more you can do without really having to try. Like, he, he, it would have been really easy for, for, for him to wave this money around in After Effects. You know, this, um, this section. Uh, in, in Premiere Pro, not, not as easy. Doable. But again, you've got to balance time against, against energy and against return. So I, I knew that there, there were going to be no fancy effects in this. And I, and I knew that I was going to rely on my audio to make it a more lively thing. So that's about it. Um, 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 I hope I've given you something useful. Let's just go down to the credits. I'm just going to... Scroll over to the end here. Um, yeah. I'm with you, Andy. Your thoughts on video. It's so literally your thoughts on video scribe. My thoughts on video scribe. Um, mm. uh, let me see if I can find my thoughts on video scribe. <laughs> I can imagine, but. Um, 
I just want to see if. if no, I didn't save it. Um, the guy sent me um, one of the other group submissions. And. Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it, it was a video scribe thing. It was so potted. It was so canned. It had an American voiceover on it. It was. It was feeble, and it, and it really was feeble. For for me, um, if you use Video Scribe, you've got to do something bigger and better than what than than the way it comes out of the box. You've got to try and take these things a little bit further. So Video Scribe could never have done even my title, Sorrel's Choice. You, you know, it it just wouldn't be able to do it. You wouldn't be able to sync it to sound. It's just so difficult on 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 something like Video Scribe. If you can add things to it, then definitely video scribes okay. But oh man, I, I, it 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 it's cookie cutter stuff, Wait. Andy. So I, I I would say no. Yeah, sure. I just just just, just well, I was just curious, but it's great. I, I guess that's where the conversation would go. <laughs> what what is your feeling on on video scribe? Like when you see a video no. scribe thing, what do you think? I don't even bother watching them anymore. I, yeah. I didn't even watch them at the beginning, to be honest. Only, I mean, I watched a couple of the RSA ones, and and they just, I just go, oh yeah, but again, you know, yeah, it, you, you can't engage with the visuals because the the hand distracts, and yes. you know what's coming. Yes, and you and you can see um, the, the difference between something with sound design underneath it and something with with just voice. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you can. I think it's got its place. You know. I'm sure, yes, of, of, no, it definitely does. Um, and, and if you do use audio, you should use it very sparingly. So I, I just want to just want to see, I'm, I'm, just, just, just take a look at what I've done here, listen-wise. Um, you're going to hear, as, as titles are emphasized, I, I, I have a little ting in the background. Sorrow now has to make a choice between three different opportunities. Yeah. He wants to party with the room, he is hungry, and he also wants to walk. So you heard the whoop, whoop, whoop. Did you? Yeah, I've got those. He wants to party with the room, he is hungry, and he also wants to So what you didn't notice there is the music. But it's there because it has to be there in order to absorb the, the terrible frequencies in the voiceover. But what I'm doing there in the sound design is I'm directing your attention to what needs to be seen and heard together. So I'm wanting you to see A, B, C and understand that this is your choice. Does that make sense? And, and you can't easily do that without a sound effect because it's very dead without a sound effect. So... Um, should I should I show it to you without a sound effect? So no. He wants to party with the room. He is hungry, and he also wants to walk later on in. See how, see how bland that is. So, okay, <laughs> it's quarter past eight now, and I did want to only take an hour of your time. Do any of you have any questions at this point? And do you need me to go on or explain anything in, in more depth? No, not from my side. Thank you, Roy. It's, oh, it's a pleasure, Colin. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Andy, so any here, questions? Roy. Any thoughts? Thank you for describing the pro or showing the process. It's really helpful. Our oh, pleasure, Paula. Yeah, that, awesome, that, Roy. Thanks, thanks for your time. Oh, it's such a pleasure, guys. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, and uh, I'll see you on I'll see you on the graphic facilitation forum. Marvelous! Okay. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you for your time. <laughs> pleasure. Thank pleasure. You. Bye. bye bye. Bye.